Tutorial Video 2 – Programming Basic Motions Hello, this is Video 2 of Omron's Collaborative Robot Tutorial Series. In this video, we would like to show you the basics of how to make the cobot move. Logging in Take a look at your screen. If you don't see the robot, click this Reload button at the top left of the screen. Double-click the cobot icon to connect it. On the login window that pops up, leave the password blank for now and click OK. Please remember to change the password later. Follow the next steps to choose your language, time, date, network setting, and speech setting. You can also change these settings at a later time. When you are back at the main screen, click Get Permission. Switch from Auto to Manual mode using the robot stick. Then go back to Menu and click on Project to start a new project. Freebot Motion Take a look at the end of the cobot arm. You will see three buttons. This button on the right is called the Free button. Hold this button down to move the cobot freely with your hand. Now try moving the cobot without holding this button. You can see that it will not move. The free button enables you to move the robot easily. Let's teach the cobot a movement. Press the free button and move the cobot to a position. Release the free button and then press the button next to it. This button is called the point button. When you press the point button, the cobot will remember that location and create a point, which will automatically be stored in the controller. Move the cobot again, pressing the free button to another position. Press the point button again to remember and store that location. Repeat this one more time. You have now taught the cobot three different points. Let's make it move between these three points. Take a look at the robot stick, which is attached to the back of the control box. Keep one hand ready on the E stop for safety. If the robot moves in an unexpected way, where it may collide with someone or something, press the E stop immediately. Press the play button on the robot stick and you will see the robot move from point to point in the order you taught it. That was easy, wasn't it? On the project screen, you will see the project that you have just created. This is called a flowchart. We will explain more about this in our next video. How to recover from e stop. To stop the cobot in an emergency situation, you will have to hit the E stop. By pressing the E stop, the power to the cobot will be shut off after it comes to a complete stop. To recover from E stop, turn the E stop button clockwise to release it. The cobot light ring will start blinking in red. In about 10 seconds, the light will start blinking in blue when the cobot enters into safe start mode. Press the stop button on the robot stick for 3 seconds. Now you can start using the cobot again. However, it is important to note that by pressing the e-stop, the cobot has lost track of what it was doing, so it cannot go back to where it left off on its own. The cobot has to start from the beginning of the flowchart. How to utilize Freebot Motion Restriction You can move the cobot freely with the free button. But in some cases, you will want to restrict the movements because that will make it easier for you to teach the cobot certain motions. For example, if you want to teach the cobot to do a simple pick and place using a scara like motion, go to Controller, Freebot, and scara like This will restrict the motion to only four axes of motion to imitate the movements of a scara robot. Depending on your application, you can enable and disable any joints or axes making your job to teach the cobot that much easier. Collaborative mode setting. Next, let's talk about adjusting the settings in collaborative mode. You can adjust the settings of collaborative mode by going to Menu, Setting, and Safety. Click on the Collaborative Mode Setting button to set up the maximum speeds and torques for the individual joints. The collaborative mode setting is divided into two parts. The first part is called the body region risk setting. 
Click any of the body regions that are most likely to come into contact with the cobot if a person steps into the work area. For example, if your application requires the cobot to extend its arm to a person's lower leg, click the lower leg region. This will automatically set the cobot's speed to a slower speed when reaching out so that it will lessen the likelihood of causing an injury to any person. The right side of this screen displays the cobot's running speed in collaborative mode. The setting values can be saved. Check the minimum possible contact area and make sure that the area where the cobot's end effector may be in contact with a person is larger than the area described. This should apply to any other equipment attached to the cobot. The collaborative mode setting automatically sets the speed and torque following the biomechanical limits listed in the ISO Technical Specification 15066, which provides safety guidance for industrial collaborative systems. It is a very convenient tool. However, please keep in mind that this function is meant only to assist in setting the safety parameters. You must perform a complete risk assessment for each application. You can also click on More Limit Setting to adjust individual joint speed and torque values, but you are limited to using values less than those based on the standards. This concludes Video 2 of the Omron TM series tutorials. In the next video, Video 3, we will show you how to use the flowcharts to start programming useful motions.